I had the chance to speak with you the day of the Dobbs decision, and you said the next battleground was obviously going to be the states. Um, we're seven months since then. We've had a midterm election. Do you feel as if that's still where the battle is, or considering that this march ended at Congress today, do you think it's national again? It's going to be a long time before we're able to do anything at the national level. Um, obviously, because Chuck Schumer's in charge of the Senate, we've got Joe Biden in the White House. Um, we're not going to get anything through, at least for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I really think it's going to be, it's going to take more of a national consensus before we get a major national um, position, pro-life uh, pro position mm -hmm. um, at that level. I think it is going to be more in the states. Uh, that's, we're already seeing some legislatures looking at various pieces of legislation. And, and I have always expected that if and when Roe was overturned, we were going to have some states that mm -hmm. allowed abortion and some that protected unborn children. Right. Um, and I think that's kind of where we're headed. I want to go to the persuasion issue here. You may have heard my back mm -hmm. and forth there. I've always thought that the pro-life movement had a really smart legal strategy, had a good electoral strategy in certain places. But always what seems missing to me is that larger persuasion strategy that almost was a divorce from the politics part. Do you accept that premise, that the persuasion hasn't worked, considering I think we, where the numbers are? I think we use legislation as an educational tool. Mm -hmm. we, we wanted to make people realize that abortion was the only uh, procedure, medical procedure, that doctors weren't required to use the regular informed consent provision. So we went after that. Uh, we tried to show that parents in you know, have the right to make decisions for their minor children in a lot of different areas, but not when it comes to abortion. So we were using legislation to educate the public and also to point out the absurdity of Roe v. Wade. Um, but we certainly needed to do more, mm -hmm. and I think we're going to be working on that a lot more in the very near future. <laughs> I look at the... Uh, Roe, oddly, has become more popular after the fact than it was in the moment. And it seems... Whatever it is, perhaps maybe the public like the, they miss the certainty that Roe provided. What do you say to that? That's maybe, maybe true. Mm -hmm. um, I think we still have a lot of people in the middle that aren't ready to ban all abortions and protect mm -hmm. the unborn children. But I still believe that there is a large, a huge segment in this country that is not comfortable with where the abortion industry is going. Mm -hmm. Abortion for any reason throughout pregnancy, mm -hmm. unlimited abortion. That's, that's still not a wildly popular it, position. It, and what's always been unique about this issue is that when Roe was the law of the land, in some ways you had an easier time creating a coalition that said, hey, this is going too far. Now that the debate is about whether it should be legal at all, it seems like now you're in the, you're, now you have the harder part. Now you have the harder job. Is that fair? It is, it is. And I think one of our main goals needs to be just convince women, even if abortion is legal, they don't need to get the abortion, mm -hmm. and we would certainly hope that they don't. So are you thinking about changing sort of the different, I mean, and so I go back to universal birth control. Is that just something that not everybody can unify around? And, it, and that it, if, you know, having birth control and maybe sort of very morning after pill, is that just something if it, you can't get consensus on that in order as a, hey, if you're for this, it means fewer abortions over here. Our organization has never taken a position on contraception, mm -hmm. and I think it is so widely available and widely used. I'm not really sure that's um, a credible argument. I, I, I think that abortion is something completely different, and, and people do look at it that way. Do you, do you think there's a unifying position for the right right now? The unifying position is that we want to stop abortion. There are a lot of different ideas about what we can do, how far we can go, how fast we can go, um, protecting the children. I want to focus on making sure that people realize that the abortion pill, which is now becoming more readily available, mm -hmm. is not as easy and as safe as just popping an aspirin. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to start seeing more stories of you know, emergency room visits increasing because of the dangers of the pill. And I think we need to just educate people about um, abortion is a, isn't as safe and effective as they've been told. What would you like to see this Republican House do? This, you said, you look, you know you can't get it passed because there's a Democratic president, you've got a Democratic Senate. But what do you want them to do? Do you want more of these messaging bills as educational tools? 
I think that would be a great way to use their, their resources um, when it comes to abortion. Get the American people to understand that our tax dollars should not be used to pay for abortions, should mm -hmm. not be used to subsidize abortion in any way. Um, they've di they did a great job, I think, on the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. We do know that there are babies who survive abortions. Mm -hmm. They should be taken care of as any other mm -hmm. child born at that same age. Um, I think those are great places to, to focus on right now. Uh, well, I, I, I don't want to get into the back and forth of the specifics of, of those instances. Uh, and, and I know some of them, there's unique medical circumstances ar around some of them. But I come back to the public opinion. It's two to one that people are unhappy about this overturn. It feels as if, do you think you need the public on your side before you attempt this legislation? Or do you think getting the legislation can bring the public along? I would say both. You know, we're certainly going to be working to pass legislation to protect unborn mm -hmm. children. I mean, for the pro-life movement, these unborn children are members of the human family that need to be protected. Just because they are small, just because they are vulnerable, does not mean that they are inconsequential. Can you get there without personhood? Without personhood? Meaning, do you have to give, because at the end of the day, it seems as if one of the, I mean, when do you, it, it, a fetus does not have constitutional rights. But some people would like to see, in so-called personhood amendments, give the fetus constitutional rights from, from some form. Do you think that has to happen before these other bills can begin to become enacted? No. no. And personhood bills actually don't have any real teeth. Um, you don't think they do? Because there have been no. some attempts in the referendum. Level. This is not something you guys get involved in. But if you look, if you look at the actual language and what it, was, what it would do, I'm not mm -hmm. sure that it would change anything. We, we need to just have laws saying protect the unborn children, but we're also, and I'm very happy that the pro-life movement is stepping forward in faster and uh, larger amounts than we have in the past about helping women who are trying to decide if they really can get through, you know, the pregnancy. Uh, states are coming forward with more programs to help moms and newborn babies, uh, and I think we need to step that up, and we are. I was just going to say, does that, you think, needs to be the f almost... Uh, a bigger focus of the pro-life movement is how are you going to help women after they have these children? We want to convince women that this is not the solution and that someone is going to be there to walk with her, hold her hand, help her through what might be a very difficult time in her life. And states are stepping forward, pro-life movement is coming forward, and I think we are going to see some changes in the very near future. All right, Carol Tobias, we will be watching. Really appreciate you coming in uh, yeah. and representing uh, your organization here. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.